So today we're testing out the Epoch batteries version 2, but unfortunately this battery is having lots of problems. And on the desk today we have a 48 volt, 48 volt, and a 12 volt model. So this is the first one that I tested. I did a capacity test and I only pulled 96.6 amp hours. And then I tested it again and I got 97.1. So I contacted Epoch and I was like, what's going on? How is this battery not passing? But all the previous models did. And then they hit me with the, oh, the firmware needs to be updated. So that's what I did. And there's two updates on the app and the app kept crashing, but I got the EMS update to work just fine. And then there was a second update, the BMS update. And halfway through that update, it bricked it. This thing is completely dead. And they're aware of this issue and other people had this issue as well. So they're sending out a tablet so I can flash this with the new firmware because there's nothing else I can do. This thing is completely done for. Also, their app is awful. It has nice colors, but it doesn't work that well at all. Especially the firmware update section. It locked up even when it worked. So we're gonna get to that in a second. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. So this is also a 48 volt battery and it's rated for 100 amp hours. And for all three capacity tests, we had the new firmware, but it didn't pull full capacity. And I kept testing it because I thought I was doing something wrong. So I sent pictures to the company before and after the cell voltages, everything. And this is what I got 98.2, 97.4 and 98.1 amp hours and for a high quality battery it should be like 104 to 106 and this has the new firmware update that's supposed to fix that capacity loss issue in the old firmware i don't know how that was an issue and how they have to update it and they're not even sending these out they also said that they have like 3,000 to 4,000 of these units out there and people need to update them so yeah i need to make this video as fast as possible so everyone's gonna have to update the firmware when they get it and hopefully you won't break it like this one over here now there is some good news this is the 12 volt model and it's rated for 460 amp hours and i pulled 469 amp hours and this is with the old firmware now keep in mind these epoch batteries are number one on my recommendations list i love these things i always call them a high quality battery but this new software with the version 2 is just plain awful never should a consumer be able to brick a device with a firmware update that's ridiculous and the app is not refined you need someone to go in there and fix all these issues now after this this happened they told me that three to five percent of all the version 2 batteries were bricked from the over-the-air update they said that they won't deny it they took care of every customer and they sent out tablets so they they could hardwire rewrite it or update or flash the firmware on these batteries so it could actually work again so the bricked one I should be able to get it back on its feet but it shouldn't ever happen. So in my opinion, they have the best hardware. It's a fantastic battery from a hardware perspective, but the software is going downhill. Now, when these guys come out with a new battery, I would be very hesitant until you ensure that the software and the app and everything actually works, especially with how much these cost. These are expensive. And these were the chosen ones. These are the ones that I liked. These were number one on my list. Can you believe that? And now it's going to the bottom of the list until they fix this. Now, when it comes to performance, when these work, they're fantastic, especially the Surge. These have a T-Class fuse, everything is updated. Actually, let's open this up. Let's see if the version two is any different. I wonder if it's really the firmware that's messing up those capacity tests. Oh, that's right, they're glued. Actually, there are some differences here. This fuse is totally different. Yeah, I've never seen one of those before. This is actually a totally different battery. The BMS design is entirely different and the bus bar configuration and they have a different main fuse. Look at this. On the old one, they had a T-Class fuse. That was a massive feature of that. And I'm not familiar with this. So it's an ITCO, Idea Thermal Cutoff is a fuse that uses a low melting point alloy. Okay, so it's just a basic fuse, but there's a wire that comes out of it. I wonder what that does. Oh, here we go. Secondary protection for charging and discharging circuits. So it uses two electrodes, which are connected with the thermal element of the fusing elements as electrical connections with passive temperature sensing fusing actions. Built-in heater with independent over temperature protection heats the thermal element and provides sufficient heat to the fuse and cuts off the main circuit and disconnects control circuit to achieve self-protection. So it's a remote fuse. So if you want the BMS 
to trip this thing manually and remotely, it can actually do so. That's actually pretty cool. I wonder how much these things cost. Also, the heat sink is massively improved and it's on both sides now. And the plugs before they were just glued and pretty standard, but these look like automotive grade. And of course, the whole battery is waterproof and it's rated. Now, before we do further testing and before we rip into these batteries, we're gonna see if they can fix this firmware and app problem. If they can and the battery works, that will be fantastic. But who knows when they'll actually have that done. And I don't wanna rip into these batteries if we can actually fix them remotely and then test them later. Also, I wanna test the surge. That was one of the main selling points of this. It has one of the best surge capacities on the market. But even though this is the only one that pulled full capacity, it has the old firmware. So again, for all of these batteries, we need to wait until they fix all these issues. And then we can actually test them and we'll see if they actually work. Who knows? You never know what's coming from China. But unfortunately, this company is now on a list of a bunch of other companies that don't test their products before they ship them out. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm gonna remove this from my recommendations list, unfortunately. Hopefully they can fix their problems soon. Thank you so much for watching. Lots of videos to come. I'm building a solar carport, a casita in the back that's powered off of solar and a million other projects. But yeah, right now I've been frustrated with this for the last few nights. It's been driving me crazy, but lots of cool videos to come. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.